my husband took my chair and now I have to figure out how to not have my computer tilting to do this. Alrighty. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and that is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear. And I am here today to do a new releases review on Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. And this came out in this May, this past May. <laughs> and this book I would characterize as a contemporary ghost story. As I was trying to figure out what I would put this under, it really comes down to what you believe. If this is your if this is your religious beliefs, then this is a contemporary. If this is not, then it's an urban fantasy. So I, that's why I'm like contemporary ghost story, I think is the best way to categorize it. But really, I think Zen Cho did a great job writing a book that defies categorization. So the basic premise of the story is Jess is moving back to Malaysia with her parents. She's a newly graduated, or she's newly graduated from college, but hasn't found a job. And her parents are moving back to Malaysia since her dad had a sickness and they want to take life a little bit easier and be close to family. And so she moves back to Malaysia with them. But before she leaves, she starts to hear an unfamiliar voice in her head. I'm sorry, you're, you might hear cars. It's time to go to work near my apartment and everyone apparently is doing it at the same time. She eventually, or she eventually finds out that the voice that she's hearing is her newly deceased maternal grandmother who she did not know. Her mother was estranged from her family and her maternal grandmother wants her to be a vessel for her god to get revenge on a real estate developer. And it goes from there. So this book was already on my want to read list, but I picked this up specifically to complete the fuckathon readathon as a challenge about immigration because she's moving because Jess and her parents are moving back to Malaysia and Cho does a great job showing the layers of the culture. You have Jess who has grown up in the States, even though she was born in Malaysia, she's lived the majority of her life there and English is the best language she speaks. It really highlighted how Jess is between both worlds. She's too Asian in America and she's too American in Malaysia. And how she has to walk that line and decide what parts of each culture she, is what she, and has to decide who she is from each culture that she has. On top of all of this is she is a lesbian and who has not yet come out to her parents. Now this isn't a romance. She already has a girlfriend who she is in love with and it's just she's trying to navigate her culture versus like her parents expectations versus more modern day expectations. And we get to see that not only her but also in her cousins that we meet. How the uh, thoughts and opinions of the younger generation are not the same as their parents and there's a balance and you see more an acceptance in the younger generation for people who are not like them. Cho did a great job on all of her characters. Even though I've never been to Malaysia, I felt like I was there with Jess navigating everything. So continuing with characters, I think Cho did a great job of having each character shine from their perspective and having Jess who has grown up in America and she looks and thinks about things in a different way. That's the only way you get the ending that we, we have is because she was the only one who would have made that decision. If it had been one of her cousins in that position, they would have done another thing because they grew up differently. And this book definitely showed the disadvantages of being monolingual. So Jess is talking to her aunt and her aunt talks about how her and her husband made sure to only speak English to their children. So their children don't speak, even though they grew up in Malaysia, they don't speak the local languages very well. And that reminded me of my mother-in-law 
who is Kiowa, talking about her her grandmother helped raise her, and her grandmother would talk, would speak Kiowa with other people of her age. But when they found out that my mother-in-law was learning it as a small child, they immediately switched to English and would only speak to her in English. And then it showed the advantages of being able to speak many different languages, especially when you live in a city or a country that has different languages. So I think I'm going to keep this spoiler free. I really enjoyed this. I think it has a great plot. If you'd like to experience a city or city life in another country, this is a great atmospheric read. And Jess is just a really great protagonist. And I gave this five stars. <laughs>